Hello everyone, this is Akaim and welcome back to some more World of Warships and today we are saying goodbye to the tier 8 French battleship, the Richelieu. And I know, I, I recently just did a video on her and also did a Funday Sunday video on her, but I'm pushing up through the tier 8, the French battleship line fairly quickly and I'm actually finally done with her. Uh, I did uh, use special camo that definitely... Uh, Gave me a lot of experience, so I was able to push up through her rather quickly. I just really want to get to the Alsace as quick as possible. And so let's actually take a look at teams. We are top tier, which is nice. Uh, playing on Neighbors, playing Domination. We have Richelieu, Bismarck, Colorado, Gneisenau, New Mexico, Nuremberg, Alba, Benson, Kagero, Luyang, Akasuki, and Vabuki. On the enemy team, there is a North Carolina, Alabama, two Gneisenau's, Normandy, York, Cleveland, Kid, Akazuki, HSF, Harikaze, Hatsuharu, and a Nevni. I am joined with Murakamo, uh, also, also known as Jorge, as well as Imperial uh, in this battle. Uh, Murakamo, and I'm, I am know I'm mispronouncing that name, so I do apologize, uh, is in the Bismarck, and Imperial is in the Lo Yang, and oh boy, we have a good team. We have a good matchmaking for us, top tier, and as usual, tier 8 always experiences the whole aspect of being up tier to tier 10, so it's actually really nice being top tier for once. So, for the most part, this battle is going to be fairly intense and I probably also should point out uh, one of the I guess common things uh, with other battleships is the British battleship HE spam syndrome you're gonna be seeing a lot of battleships using HE and it's just it's just perturbs me anyone that does not know uh, for most part of my experience with the British battleships I used AP a lot. I will use HE uh, when the necessity arises, but the AP on the higher tiers and say like the Nelson, it's actually really, really good. So I use AP a lot. I'm not a big, big fan of using HE. And as you'll see, the Nice Now, the Normandy, and some other battleships out there are going to be firing HE. And it just, it just perturbs me. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. It's just me, probably. Uh, so let's actually talk about the ship. Rochelle Lou, she's a fast French battleship, can get up to about 35 knots. Uh, she is similar play style to the North Carolina, Alabama, with the requirement of going more bow in, which is beneficial for her because of the fact that all her turrets are on the bow of the ship. Um, and very similar to the Rochelle Lou in a lot of ways, but the dispersion is just a teensy bit better. Uh, than the Dunkirk, that's to be certain. So, let's actually talk about her guns. First off, guns are the same size as the Bismarck Interpets. 380 millimeters, pretty hard hitting shells. But my main complaint about these guns is due to the fact that they generally tend to overpen a lot of cruisers. I'm not saying it's the uh, exception, but it's kind of the norm with this ship uh, from what I've noticed when playing her is that she just generally tends to get a lot of overpens and it's quite aggravating at times but they're still good guns they are very fast in the air uh, going 830 meters per second which is fairly decent and they're fairly hard hitting shells. Uh, you can obviously penetrate into the citadels of other battleships, which is fantastic. Missouri's, Yamato's, etc. So, they are quite nice. Now, moving on to the other aspect. The dispersion's extremely winky. It can be amazing. Uh, you do have four guns per turret, so a total of eight guns, all facing forward. Only downside is you can't really fire in the rear of the ship you can't really fight while pulling away and it can be at times very dramatic on its dispersion uh, very dramatic due to the fact that they just generally tend to go every which way and it's not entirely reliable like with the Leon and the Normandy 
uh, they actually had enough shells to compensate for that dispersion, um, and he still hit fairly reliably with them. Now, one other little thing, as our team is starting to push from uh, C, and actually keep an eye on this Gneiss now versus this Cleveland. Just, just kind of keep a mental note of that battle that's currently happening uh, with that Cleveland. Uh, another fact of the Richelieu is she does have some semi-decent secondaries, not as good as the Bismarck, not as good as the Turbots, but I mean you do have cruiser light, uh, light cruiser guns uh, with a spackling of some smaller caliber guns, but they face more of the stern of the ship. So the only real potential of using all three of those uh, light cruiser guns is if a ship comes up from the rear for some surprise butt sex. Now I have taken into a rather nice position. I do have a big old island protecting my broadside. Uh, the only downside is if a destroyer manages to get back from behind as we just get our first kill, things aren't going to be uh, working out well for us. So we do have to keep in mind there might be a destroyer. There is a kill kid uh, that is uh, actually a really good player. So got to keep an eye out for him. But there's also a Harikaze out there as well. And I am spotted so they know where I am and I'm not really maneuvering uh, that much. I've been moving back and forth and we have just lost our Fubuki. But you can see at the moment we do have two destroyers kind of on the uh, southern side of us right behind us so you would think we'd have some protection but oh boy all right well the enemy team is actually doing a really good job they're actually pushing into B uh, they have caught up on the amount of ships uh, with us so at the moment they're kind of holding their ground uh, Gnaiz now is in a very vulnerable position. He's pushed out quite heavily. He's currently fighting uh, Murakamo in the uh, Bismarck. So not a very fun fight for that Gnaiz now, but he should hopefully go down. Now, as I have been saying, the Rochelle is very unique in the fact that she's a very fast battleship. And her play style really requires uh, essentially battle tanking. Um, for instance, I've had battles where I essentially hold uh, a lane, I think it was on north or something like that, and was able to maintain that position for a fairly decent time. But as you can see, we are now getting pushed against the Harikaze. Now I do have manual fire control of secondary guns on my captain, and with the fact that this Harikaze is now coming around behind us, it should prove beneficial. However, they aren't the most reliable guns, even with uh, manual control of secondaries. Now, another nice thing about the Rochelle is that she does have speed boost. This does mean that she will start to accelerate uh, rather quickly and stop a little bit more so than what you normally expect. And there we go. Our secondaries actually took out the enemy Harikaze. But I don't want to push around this corner because that's quite a few battleships and there is still a kid around so wisely I went ahead and beached myself just to prevent uh, any possible torpedoes or causing more damage to myself and there we go nice salvo on this York and we actually net ourselves a citadel but as you can see we have four over pens and one penetration now there might be someone out there that might completely disagree with what I'm saying with the whole fact of the overpenetration uh, with the Rochelle's guns. You might be right. Maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just my RNG. I don't know. Maybe it's that case, but I've just had the worst luck with this. So, yeah. Anyways, uh, battle's actually fairly close. Uh, we are ahead one ship. They do hold two caps. There is still a kid, Alabama, Cleveland, which the Cleveland just took out that guy. Now that's been chasing him down for the last, what, six, eight minutes? Something like that. And I believe there's also another battleship. I don't really recall which one. But we have to do something. And the one nice thing about the Rochelle with that speed boost is she's actually really good at pushing. Actually, fairly decent at pushing. But I still have to be careful. There's still a kid. Now, the kid only has one torpedo launcher available for it. And 
that is going to help me because I could at least eat a torp or two and still survive. Uh, but this North Carolina is just unfortunately in a bad position. And look there. There are torpedoes. Good thing I did not push around. And going to pull back just a little bit. So at the moment, we should be able to take out the North Carolina, which should give us more points. And that kid is now, unfortunately, pretty much by himself. He does have an Alabama, and there is also that pesky Cleveland around. But I think it's a good time to actually push. Now I am spotted, but we're going to go ahead and push around as quick as we can. One also nice little thing, and unfortunately we're not really able to see it in this battle, is the fact that the Rochelleus AA is actually pretty incredible. Uh, with the proper captain skills, your AA can go out to almost six kilometers, uh, and they actually hold a pretty potent punch, uh, which is extremely beneficial, uh, especially when dealing with ser uh, CVs. So you can definitely take advantage of your AA. Uh, it is a good AA ship, so you can definitely help your teammates out with that. All right, so with essentially talking about the AA, the guns, the speed, her concealment's actually fairly decent. It is around 12.3 kilometers. Um, and we'll just watch. No Citadel's on a Alabama broadside. Yeah, I know you could argue maybe I wasn't aiming right, but broadside Alabama should be able to be citadeled even with 380 millimeters and no sits nothing but i'm taking my time kid is still around dropping torpedoes like a madman uh but we should be able to withstand this fire uh from the cleveland and should be able to take out the alabama there we go that is kill number three very very nice now this this cleveland's being a pesky little bug and unfortunately we are currently being spotted by the uh, plane that is left behind and we can see that the kid actually managed to reach into C. Now I am being warned right now uh, not to rush out uh, because it could prove deadly but the moment the kid has dropped torpedoes so I do have a little bit of a buffer but right now I really want to take out this Cleveland and honestly I would normally say taking out a Cleveland as a tier 8 isn't that difficult but I don't know, this Cleveland just proved kind of a pesk for me. He's actually doing a really good job. Keep in mind, he was facing off a Gnaiz now that was chasing him down, and he has no heals. And he managed to actually kill that Gnaiz now and still had over 10,000 points of health. So he's doing a really good job. But we'll see how he fares against uh, this next salvo. Now, one nice thing, as we finally get a Citadel, there we go. There you, there you guys go. It's finally been proven wrong. I've been wrong all this time. The Rochelleu can Citadel cruisers. Of course it can. It, it can definitely Citadel, but for the most part, I've just been experiencing a lot of overpens. But anyways, we have a heal up. All that's left on the enemy team is the kid. We are still being spotted by a plane, but at the moment, we don't quite know where he is. Now we are being detected, and... I should have been paying attention. I should have been paying attention to the right-hand side. I just came around uh, this big island to the right of us uh, as we were spotted. Uh, so that should have told me where he was, but instead I was thinking he was up north. And keep in mind, the kid does have torpedoes, but one nice thing about the Rochelle is she's quick. And if the destroyer captain does not anticipate how quickly she can actually maneuver... She can actually dodge a fair amount of torpedoes. There we go. Took a torpedo on the torpedo uh, bulkhead. So did not sustain any flooding. And now we know where the kid is. He's currently being holed up behind this island. And we're actually one away from a Kraken. And I really want this Kraken. So AP is loaded. Kid, you are going to go down with all the fiery fury of the French. All right, so with that, this battle is almost win. Can we get Kraken? Can we get this last kill and take home the victory? Kid is doing his very best to deal with the enemy destroyers. But nice thing about the Rochelle is she's quick and goodbye. Enemy destroyer sunk. 
So our team earned a victory. We brought home 356,419 silver, 19,623 due to the camel. That's the only reason why I have so much XP. But we earned quite a few badges, which is actually really nice. We earned Confederate Devastating Strike, Fireproofs, Close Quarter Expert, Dreadnought, and Kraken Unleashed. We did 107,862 points of damage, 45 shell hits, 1 plane shot downs, 5 kills, 2 citadels, 1 assisted base capture, and 26 secondary hits. We are top of the team with a base XP of 1,988. Uh, Normandy, the Alabama, Cleveland, Kid, and on and the Harikaze were all victims of our shells. Main guns did 104,717. Secondaries, 3,145 with 26 shell hits. Ooh, I should go ahead and point this out. Don't go for a secondary build for the reshell. It honestly is not that worth it. Main fact is that her secondaries are more toward the rear of the ship, not really on the side that much. And it's honestly not that worth it uh, probably should focus on the guns more than anything else uh, but we'll talk more about it once we get into the port so yeah not a bad game very exciting uh, very good evidence on how you should play in the Rochelle once again she's very good at battle tanking and she can hold aside uh, if played properly and is not out positioned by other ships such as the stores or even battleships but with that we're gonna go ahead and jump into the port I will see you guys there. All right, everyone, welcome back to the port and the rich. I just don't know if I really much care for her. Uh, just, I mean, yes, at times she can be very powerful, but other times it's extra it's extraordinarily um, painful because it's just at it's so RNG whether or not you actually get that citadel and not an overpin. And that's that's probably my main complaint about this uh, ship is she overpins a lot. I mean, a lot of times where you would expect to get a citadel, she seems just to be able to overpin. Uh, but let's go ahead and take a look at the stats. Survivability, 63,700, which is not bad. Uh, is definitely better than the Monarchs. Uh, it's not as good as the Amagi or North Carolina. Uh, so a decent amount of health, which once again is not the worst thing in the world, uh, but not the greatest. Armor is decent, uh, 430 millimeters at the thickest. Uh, one major thing you do have to keep in mind, she has a decent citadel. She does have turtleback armor, which does really help her uh, from being citadel close up. But at ranges, she can be citadeled at even at a slight angle. She can be citadeled, been citadeled by a Alabama before uh, through the side armor up here. So it is possible to be citadeled as long as you're careful and uh, more than anything. As long as you don't get outmaneuvered by another battleship, you should do fine. Torpedo protection is 37%, which is not too bad. Uh, you can at least negate some damage. It's not as good as the Amagi, obviously, but it's it's in that decent range. Uh, main guns, she has two quad eight, 380 millimeters. Uh, once again, very similar to the Dunkirk as far as playing style, but this uh, actually has the armor to actually withstand bow tanking. 30 second reload time. 5,400 points of damage for HE, 36% fire chance, not the greatest. Uh, but AP damage is decent, but once again, they're very fast firing. Uh, they have 830 meters per second, and they will do 11,900. But most of the times, you're going to be seeing a lot of overpens, and that's probably, once again, the reason why I really complain about this ship. Uh, is yes she can hit hard uh against other battleships fantastic cruisers finicky and it's actually somewhat aggravating at times another nice thing is she does have a 23 kilometer and this is not upgraded you can actually increase the range i just didn't think it was necessary to increase the range even further uh increase the range uh, about i think it is to about 25 25.3 kilometers insane for a tier 8 but that's what she is capable of uh she has a good decent amount of secondaries or uh, better yet shouldn't say decent 
they are kind of not the greatest. Uh, I would not recommend a secondary builds for the Richelieu uh, because main of her secondaries are in the rear. She does have these four wing turrets sitting up on the side, uh, but that's not very beneficial. You do have to show a little bit of a broadside, not a huge chunk, but you do have to show a little bit just to get them to actually start opening up. And the three in the back, uh, you have to show a lot just to get them to open up. This very, two very rear turrets, they can actually have a decent firing angle, but they're not the greatest. Uh, so you do have six dual 100 millimeters, four second reload time, 1400 HE damage, 6% fire chance with an 8.8 kilometer range. And then you have essentially light cruiser guns, three triple 152 millimeters, 12 second reload time, kind of slow. Uh, max HE damage is 2200 with 12% fire chance and an 8.8 kilometer range. Secondaries, okay, but I would not recommend a secondary build for the Rochelle. Uh AA defense is amazing. Uh, 48 single 20 millimeters, 190 average damage with 2.4 kilometer range. Then you have 14 quad 40 millimeters. Average damage is 245 with a 4.2 kilometer range. Then you have six dual 100 millimeters uh, with an average damage of 45 with a 4.5 kilometer range. Then you have three triple 152 millimeters. Average damage is 27 with a six kilometer range. Maneuverability is very, very quick. 33.6 knots. That's without the speed boost. She can get up to around 34, 35 knots. 35 knots with the speed boost, which is fantastically quick. Uh, turning soaker radius is decent with a 850 meter. Uh, rudder shift time is a little bit lousy. It's a little bit slower, 15.4 seconds, but it's not the worst thing in the world. Uh, concealment is decent, 12.6 kilometer range. Uh, not the stealthiest, but once again, it's kind of in the middle, which is decent, but it's not the greatest in the world. Uh, while firing and smoke is 15.4 kilometer range. Moving on to the upgrades, uh, as far as the ship itself, I would highly recommend go for the B-hole first. This improves your AA, reduce your rudder shift time, and increase your health. Then go for the engine uh, upgrade. This increases your speed from, from 31.9 knots to 33.6. And then if you really feel like it, go for the range upgrade, 25.3 kilometers, almost very few battleships in the game have that range and especially at tier 8 it's fantastic uh though you may not always hit anything at 25.3 kilometer range or very accurately it's still there if you want it moving on to the modifications uh main arms mod 1 then i have gone for damn com system mod 1 aiming system once again you can go for a secondary build, but I don't really recommend it on the Rochelle. Uh, secondaries are not the greatest uh, to really benefit for that. Uh, then uh, Damage Comm System Mod 2 and Concealment Expert as usual. Captain is actually almost fully uh, spec'd up. You probably could opt out priority target. I really just like this skill. You could easily go for preventative maintenance. Uh, especially if you are considering a full secondary build. Uh, then expert marksman, superintendent, advanced firing training, especially for your AA. This is fantastic. Manual uh, fire control of secondary armaments. If you're going for a secondary build is very beneficial. Not optional. You can easily opt out for this. I just did it because this is going to the Republic. Uh, so this will be a bit beneficial later on. And then concealment expert. And with the last point, obviously, you can obviously go for the preventative maintenance. But with that, we are saying goodbye to the Rochelle and we are moving on to the Alcest. So this is going to be it for this video. If you liked what you saw, hit the like and subscribe button. You guys have a great and fantastic day. Zai Jen.